koto kato ko henora te manga ko haraki te awa no tamaki aho ko troi to ko inga ko chetan to ko fana e memberships of partnerships or e FSC tana tato kato so that is my always room for improvement PBR and a very warm welcome on behalf of the FSC to the nearly 300 registered participants joining us today and the many subsequent video watches for this thing of online beauty and FSC webinar full of meaningful content. And a big thanks to our incredible guests today. Uh, we are so grateful to them for giving their time. And one such guest who's steering the walker today is Sam Keller. So Sam, immediately, kia ora, mate, over to you. Kia ora, Troy. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, just before we kick things off today, we'll just start with uh, Kavakia. Um, and I'll just, I'll just say I've got a few people from my team in the room. You just have my face to look at, but there'll be others in the room. So just give me a bit of bit of oomph. So I'll, I'll kick things off. Uh, matua te tihi, matua te kaha, matua te aio, matua te mana, Ia te hakino, tokia te ha ora, ki ruka, ki rawa, ki waho, ki roto, huie, tai, ki e. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, um, ko nga tahu tōku iwi, ko moiraki rawa, ko tomutu oku runanga, uh, nō o te tahia hau, he kai whakahari, um, mātua o whararo hau, uh, ko Sam Kaura hau. Uh, welcome, uh, kia ora everyone. Welcome very much. To, um, welcome to this panel today. I'm um, very privileged to be facilitating. We've got some rock star guests on merely facilitating. So looking forward to the action over the next uh, next hour. Um, so I'll just start with um, introducing the, the the panel, just names and, and titles, but I'll let them just um, provide a bit of information about them themselves. Um, so we've got uh, Fontaine moses Takami, who's the Director of uh, Māori Strategy and Indigenous Inclusion at Westpac. Um, shout out to Fontaine. <laughs> we've got uh, Precious Clark, who's the CEO of uh, Modia, and we've got Chris Douglas, who's the principal of uh, My Fiduciary. So I'll, I'll let these fine people introduce themselves. So I'll go to you first, Fontaine. Tēnā koe, Sam. Uh, tēnā te mihi. Uh, mahana rangatira mā, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, I te taho tōko pāpa, ko hikarangi te maunga, ko waipu te awa, ko Ngāti Prau te iwi. Uh, ko Fontaine Moses te kani ahau. Kia ora koutou. So I am Fontaine. Um, titles are interesting. So Magpie is the title I prefer to use. But, you know, I get paid by, you know, Potaki Director of Māori Strategy for uh, Westpac. Kia ora. Kia ora, Fontaine. Um, might go to you, Precious, to introduce yourself. A tēnā koutou katoa, tuatahi kā tika ka mihi atu ki a koe trui, me tō mihi tūwhera i tēnei ahiahi, ngā mihi, ki a koe hoki Sam, a me tō me o kaimahi i um, whārikiha tērā karakia mō tātou, tēnā koutou, a he uri a hau nō Ngāti Whātua, nō te uri o hau nō Waikato Ngāti Pāua Ngāti He, i te taho tōku pāpa ko Ngāti Pākeha te iwi. Ko Precious Clark tōku ingoa, ko taku tūranga mahi ki Mauria ko te tumu whakarai. So I hail from the tribes Ngāti Whātua in central Auckland, te uri o hau in the Kaipara, Ngāti Pāua in east Auckland, Waikato in Mulu territory, Ngāti He in Tauranga. And on my dad's side, I'm proudly fifth generation New Zealand Pākehā. I'm the Chief Executive at Mauria. I'm also an elected representative on the Ngāti Whātua Orake Trust and was on the board of Whairawa, the commercial arm of Ngāti Whātua Orake, uh, for 10 years. So uh, Ngā Mihi Nui Kia Koutou. It's nice to see that some of my alumni from our Takā program have signed in. So kia ora koutou. Kia precious. Thanks very much. All right, Chris, lucky last. Uh, thank you, Sam. Kia ora, everyone. Ko Ngāti Pākehā tōku iwi, nō Tamaki Makaru a hau, ko Chris tōku inua. So uh, my name is Chris Douglas. I'm a principal at My Fiduciary. We are a independent investment consultant, uh, and we uh, work with uh, Māori in the EB groups, charitable trusts, and independent financial advisors. Around right, about 40% of our clients are um, uh, Māori and iwi groups. We, um, uh, we are um, uh, an independent consultant as well. But I think I'll park that because I think we're going to talk about 
uh, the why later on. So I'll leave it for the assent. But thanks for having me, everyone. Uh, really excited to be involved in this. Uh, thanks, Koto. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, the co-pub we're talking about about today is ways we're going to explore ways for effectively gauging with Murray and also iwi organisations in the financial services sector. Uh, we're going to try and discuss ways about how we can do things a, a little bit differently. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll start kicking things off. Um, so the, the structure of the session will be, um, it's going to be a panel discussion, but we're definitely going to encourage partai or questions throughout. And we will allow some time at the end to cover off, off questions, but I kind of find it easier with these sort of things that as you're on a particular topic, if you'd like to know more about it, feel free to put a question in there. I'll do my best to, um, to, to raise that to the panel um, a, a, as we're going along. Um, I think you have to start, um, click an acknowledgement as you started, but just reminding everyone that the call is recorded um, as well. Um, so the structure of this session will be, I'm just going to start off very shortly just with describing the value of the, the Maori economy and just how it's rapidly evolving. Um, we're going to discuss ways for engaging directly with Māori and also iwi organisations. Um, we're going to discuss challenges, but we don't want to have a negative spin on, a spin on it. So we'll also discuss practical solutions as well that you can take back to your um, organisations. So um, just in terms of setting the scene, so in terms of the Māori economy, it's now estimated to be more than $70 billion and is estimated to be more than 60,000 small um, um, to medium-sized Māori businesses. Um, and iwi organisations and Māori businesses are not only um, rapidly growing in terms of the asset base, but they're also rapidly growing in terms of their sophistication and also diversification. Um, but despite this growth um, growth rate, there's still significant challenges that these organisations and individual Māori face to achieve uh, economic rangatiratanga or, or self-determination and also significant challenges to improve their, their well-being. Um, so I might, I might start with the first part or, or question, um, maybe looking at Fontaine or Precious, whoever wants to kick things off, just around, I've just very briefly outlined um, the value of the Māori economy. I'm just keen for one of you just to address from your perspective uh, what opportunities that brings with, you know, the rapidly growing pace and sophistication that we're seeing. So what are the opportunities that organisations can, can leverage from that? Um, Fontaine or Precious? Um, hand over to one of you to kick things off. Maybe go to you, Fonte, because <laughs> I know you didn't want me to, so I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give a nod to Presh, but I think she was nodding back at me. Um, oh, kia ora. And um, I think for me, for this question in regards to partnering, in regards to Māori and iwi, the statistics that have just come out, which I find the most fascinating, is that one in three of under 25 in New Zealand are Māori. And so when we look at partnering, it's not so much the, uh, the fact that you know, the Māori economy is, is not as so integrated into the, the New Zealand economy that we've, we're part of it. We're not a distinct, you know, outside of it. And I think the growing population is where all of the opportunity lies for us to be able to work with Māori and iwi because that's where our future lies, right? Like, so, you know, in October 2021, Beryl and Pini Native helped us to actually create this report. And I think it doesn't matter what report you read, even though people talk about the high number for the assets that Māori and iwi hold, the greatest opportunity is the fast-moving population, which is us. You know, so between uh, 2013, 2018, the last stat said that in the labour force that we grew by 40% versus non Māori, which was eight. So the new state, is, like the new census says that we've grown, our population has grown by 12.5, which makes us one in three. That means that we've got a, the opportunity to be able to engage with uh, Māori for what is our future generation? What is this workforce going to look like? What does it mean? And so I suppose for, for me, when we talk about micro small business, you know, there was an increase in regards to the amount of micro small businesses in New Zealand. 86% of those of businesses in New Zealand, which is, you know, 400, oh, 641,000 businesses uh, in micro and small, 20% of those are Māori. So what that tells me is that we are 
entrepreneurs, the Māori entrepreneurial, that we are, um, and that we are actually based in the regions, and that we're young. So for me, when we're discussing about how do we engage, what's the opportunity, well, let's have a look at those steps to start with, because that stead around the um, the assets, I think, is a, a blue is a, just a hearing. You follow that, then we miss the whole opportunity that it actually presents itself for engaging with Māori anyway. So I think. For me, the first thing that we need to think about is that um, Māori and Iwi are contributors, not a cost. This is not a diversity, equity, inclusion play. This is actually as contrib on contributors to the actual New Zealand economy. How do we lean into and look at utilising that particular strength that is currently there? Ora, I'll, build on, I'll build on what Fontaine um, spoke about Ngā mihi nui ki aku e te tuakana with that increasing population base. Um, just just want to add that the trajectory of, of the Māori economy is growth, so it's expected to increase to over 100 billion within the next six years. Um, and so what can the financial sector contribute to actually ex um, improving that outcome? And it's a lot. At the moment, uh, the Māori economy contributes to the depending on how you measure it, between 6 and 15% of the GDP. And um, and it can grow beyond that, but it requires a bit more concerted effort and it requires the financial sector in particular to be a bit more innovative and to um, choose to respond to unique factors uh, impacting the Māori economy rather than providing an option of, no, we can't do that. So I'm thinking of examples of lending on collective land. Rather than saying it can't be done, actually you need got a responsibility to say how can we do it. And there are some examples, um, particularly BNZ. So Kia ora Jo, she's uh, watching, and Fontaine at Westpac have partnered with Ngāti Whātua to provide some options around that. So you know, demonstrating that it can be done. What that does is it fills the Māori economy, which allows for more SMEs to grow, which helps us resolve some of the issues around employment, which in particularly when one of three um, of our labour force are going to be Māori, these are the kind of shifts that we need to occur to increase national GDP. Um, so what is good for Māori actually is good for everybody. Um, and also just wanted to say that we're thinking about this in the iwi space all the time and reach out. We're really we're really happy to share our learnings. We're happy to share our musings. We, we must partner to get this kind of national approach. Um, so I, we're going to get into soon how you would do that, how you do that, but just wanted to, to put that plant there. So that's it there. Uh, bye. Thanks very much, Fontaine and Precious. Um, as Precious has said, we'll get we'll get more into solution mode in a second and come up with some ways for how we can encourage that engagement and, and collaboration. So we'll, we'll, we'll park that one for now. Uh, just before we move on to the next question, I'll just uh, check in with you, Chris, if there's anything you wanted to add. Uh, otherwise, we can move on to the next question. Yeah, no, I think um, the only the only point I would say is that obviously, you know, when we're thinking about, um, you know, I, I come at, at it from um, I'm a Pakiha, my um, uh, my wife's Maori, she fuck fuck up to uh, Waima, up north, um, uh, kids. Uh, so so I've got some understanding about um, you know uh, her uh, approach in town Maori. Um, but, but it just it's, it moves from the individual, which is very much um, the European way, or certainly um, into, to more of a collective, and that's the difference, and that's some of the challenges that come with that, I think, as well, about how we uh, navigate um, that situation. But, but it's also for the better when it is for the collective, too. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, we'll move back in a second to talking about ways we can engage with uh, iwi organisations, how we can collaboratively foster the the growth of the Māori economy and also just learn from, from each other. We spoke about innovation before, but possibly keen to explore that a bit more, how innovation maybe looks a little bit a bit different when we talk about iwi organisations. But uh, maybe before that, we do that. Well, I'm keen to have a bit of a focus on uh, individuals. Um, so I'm keen to explore ideas for um, ways we can engage directly with, with Māori. Uh, and, and whether the approach needs to be different. You might tell me, no, look, Sam, you can do, just do it the same way as, as you engage with everyone else. So just keen to explore that. And maybe before we get into that, I might just 
talk very briefly. I'm not trying to plug my own business, but just talk briefly about what we do at Firearm and ways we um, engage directly with our with our Fano. Um, so we're the Natahu Investment Scheme. We've been around since um, 2006, so we're coming up to our 18 year um, anniversary, um, which is awesome. And we honestly have spent you know that time building up trust and respect and learning and and failing and, and learning from those failures and perfecting the way we not that we perfect but you know the way the way we do things. So um sort of things we do is we design uh financial literacy um co around different life stages. So we have um a, a program for our uh, Tamariki uh, called Na Na Paitiaki Moni, which means money guardians. So that's for our five to twelve year olds. Uh, we also have an initiative for our Rangatahi or Rakatahi, which is for your high school kids. Um, which is just still on pilot mode, um, and we have an initiative for our wahine. So I guess the point I'm, I'm trying to get across is we don't have a, a one-size-fits-all approach. We, we tailor things based on people's life stages and try to communicate and connect with people in a way that really resonates with them. Um, we also recognise that savings can be difficult, so we um, incentivise savings. So this is very key, we save at S, but we have a, a concept called match savings, which if we'll match savings up to a certain dollar amount each year, depending on how much they save, or we'll, try and pay annual distributions and we try and weave our indigenous values through everything we do as well to try and build that kind of mutual uh, trust and respect so um, i just thought just kick it off with a few of my own thoughts but i'm keen to go um maybe just just because you were you're talking chris maybe just start with you mate just around from your perspective i know you bring a slightly different uh, perspective to the others uh just uh, and but i know you work with eb organizations as well so just keen to hear your tips and tricks or maybe what you've tried and what hasn't worked in the past around engaging directly with with Murray. So we'll start with you, Chris, sure. you'll go to um, uh, Precious and Fonte. Okay, so um, look, uh, like we've, we've actually learned a tremendous amount as, as an organisation and, and me individually as well with uh, working with our Māori clients. And uh, it's, it's, I've got to say it's, um, um, it, it's, it's just, it's been a, a really fantastic experience. Relationships, uh, a key, and that's one thing I've learned, is to really make sure you're investing into the relationship, investing the time. Um, we often make sure that when we're uh, meeting with our clients, uh, we're doing it face to face. Uh, we're meeting them um, in their rohi in their area. Um, we've done, uh, um, you know, and, and and sometimes that can also be in the weekends as well. Because you know, when you're working with um, uh, with a group of trustees, um, uh, you know they're all busy. They've got day jobs, so you're going to find time outside of work hours to go and meet with them as well. Um, the we we do a lot of work. Um, we've done a lot of workshops, I should say, with iwi around uh, pre-settlement and just thinking about how they want to be. Um, you know, uh, thinking about their portfolio, thinking about the values. Um, um, and uh, also just uh, uh, understanding the unique circumstances as well, because the one point I would make about uh, the different Māori groups that we work with is that they've got, um, uh, depending on where they are, um, you know, they might have biases towards, um, you know, the investable opportunities within their rohi. Um, there might be uh, certain... Um, approaches that they have around cultural assets, um, uh, their approaches around private assets, fishery, fisheries, forestry, agricultural uh, assets as well. So making sure you can actually have a, a full total lens and understanding about um, their portfolio is a really important consideration. It's not just a listed, you know, equities, cash, fixed interest portfolio. Awesome. Uh, th thanks very much, for that Chris. Um, we, we have just had a question come through, so may I might just uh, um, ask that one now, maybe for you, Precious, um, and then we'll continue this discussion. So, um, this is a question around the growing population, and um, we're saying corporate Aotearoa are setting targets to increase representation of Murray, and Murray entities rely on high levels of kaimahi. Um, how do corporates ensure that they're giving back and not depleting Murray entities of talent? Are you happy to answer that one, Precious? I have a go. Tēnā yeah. koe jau mō tō pātai. It's a great question, especially coming from um, someone who's working in the bank. Um, I, I think there can be a symbiotic relationship. Often what occurs with Māori is that we start our training in big corporate organisations. Um, we sometimes don't feel like it's a natural place for us to belong or to exist. 
we generally might tap out, start our own business and go into governance at the same time. So we leapfrog and, and miss out of a whole lot of opportunity to really refine um, management skills in big organisations. And if we're not refining them in the big organisations, our iwi are missing out on having that skill set. So I think it warrants having a symbiotic relationship and recognising how can we get trained, develop, build um, expertise and excellence within some of these big organisations and then pathway into some of our Māori entities to get that uplift um, at an iwi or at a Māori business level that services our economy. Bye bye. Thanks very much, Precious. Uh, Fonte, I might, I might hand over to you. Just um, going back to the original question, just around what ways for effective, effective engagement. I uh, keep very keen to hear your views on that. Um, kia ora. I think um, it probably goes into both what Chris and Precious were saying, actually. So I, I just want to uh, mihi out to Joe and as a colleague at Tafia, which is the Māori Bankers Rupu. Um, also on the board of Ringo Hora, which is a workforce development council that's part of the services industry, and Toi Tui Taha, which is the centre of sustainable finance. And the reason I say that is because I think, for me, the opportunity to engage with Māori, we are not homogenous. So, you know, one size does not fit all. You have a strategy and corporates, a DEI, and you're like, right, this is our diversity, so we're going to have a target. And so we become, well, Māori becomes, you know, this target with a with this kind of little centre in it and you start shooting kind of bullets. Kidding, sorry. So I know this is recorded. But um, so, you know, how do we think about it differently? Like, so when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So relationships are based on how you change the way that you think about the relationship you're into. So for me, it's about, Let's think about the relationship. Then we think about a partnership. And so this, for me, is about ships. And we don't journey into the world of te ao, you know, corporate or te ao Pākehā by ourselves. We go together. Same with te ao Māori. So, so we do ships like internships, you know, uh, cadet ships. You get it? Yeah, it's a ship. You know. And then you're on the other side for te ao Māori, you do scholarships, you do sponsorships. And so, you know, the... What the ship is to do is to actually bring us closer together. So you go from saying, well, those people to we, and the most enduring ship is a friendship. So when Precious says, you know, Fonte, I need your help, I go, of course, and I'm a fierce advocate for Precious because she is my friend. So that's why we, Māori are not different. What we're looking for is the ability to grow our relationships through a partnership to actually deepen to friendship, then I think corporates won't be so precious about losing Māori back to iwi. What we will do is become a great incubator of talent and actually willingly provide all the skills for our people to be able to find their manamu to haki and actually choose where they want to where they want to be. Awesome. Thanks very much, Fonte. I mean, a bit building on that, I mean, can you recommend any tips to the uh, listeners today for how, I mean, individuals or organisations can kind of build that deep, um, that deeper kind of whanaungatanga with, with Māori instead of, um, you know, focusing more on a transactional outcome, focus on more relationship outcome? Like, are there any kind of practical tips you can recommend for, for, for people about how they might go about that process just to kind of dispel any kind of uh, myths about it? Yeah, engage Precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, so, I'm, happy, I'm happy to hand over to you, Precious, if you, if you if you want to cover that one as well, just given your, your co-popper. I can speak from two different perspectives. So I'll speak from an iwi perspective first, and then I'll talk about what we do in Modia to support organisations with that question. So um, from an iwi perspective, we are driven by our values, particularly most iwi are going to have Pretty similar values, manakitanga, whanaungatanga, kaitiakitanga, they're general, you're generally going to see them. And our values based decision making is future focus, it's mokopuna decision making. Um, but what underpins that is our culture is our secret source, it's our value add. So 
one thing that we've done at Ngāti Whātua Orake is that we've built into our procurement policy that you have to be able to demonstrate your Māori culture competency if you want the contracts with us. Um, we do that because we've invested so much time and expense in training people to understand us when actually they should be doing it themselves. So uh, that's, that's just a little forewarning. This is the trajectory of what it takes to engage with Māori. Um, so flipping that from the other perspective, so at Modia we work with organisations and are known for working with developing Māori cultural competency of people and organisations and we run a range of programmes that we've been delivering since 2016 to support organisations and people with that. We explore this very topic and we teach you how to do it and it is not a one-size-fits-all. Um, I get asked for a relationship with my iwi and my business uh, probably about twice a month, and I'm not the chair, the deputy chair, or the CE. So um, when I'm being asked, I am assessing what is your alignment with our strategic plan, and that is going to uh, that's going to determine am I going to invest time in creating a relationship here. So a starting point is do your research. Uh, we're really public. All of our stuff is on the web, is on our websites. You can find out who are the key people to engage with, what are our strategic priorities, uh, where do they sit in amongst all of the strategic priorities. All of this information is publicly available. Um, it just ha happens to be that most people don't think to apply simple due diligence processes when thinking about how to engage with Māori, but guess what, they're pretty much the same. The next part is making sure you have your cultural competency so that when you engage, you've got the best chance of building a rapport and showing Māori that you've done those things that demonstrate to them that you care about their identity and who they are. Um, Having navigators becomes really important. And um, just, you know, warning, there are cowboys out there. So how do you figure out who are the who are good navigators? Um, it's the simple triangulation of information. It's about asking people who has a good reputation for for brokering relationships, who stays when the when stuff gets tough and who helps you navigate out of those tough situations. Um, Generally, as Māori, we've got a pretty good idea of who we do and don't want to engage with. You also have to do your research to understand the relationships between iwi. And so if uh, your navigator is from so-called iwi and that so-called iwi is having uh, tension with the iwi you're trying to uh, draw, uh, have a relationship with, they're not the right navigator for this type of relationship find somebody else. Um, and sometimes the navigator might not be the person you're engaging with, and I hope that they would be honest about that and um, align you to someone who possibly would, would have more success in getting a foot in the door for you. And then there's the investment that both Chris and Fontaine spoke to, the time, the relationships. Um, I was going to be cheeky and say, you know, everyone enjoys a flight, so I don't know. <laughs> Canada <laughs> to engage with Indigenous people there. Um, I'm re I really am joking. That is not what we're asking for. But it is does require an investment. It it requires being able to have the little talk and the big talk. And so, um, if you want a relationship with the iwi, you really do have to engage with their board, and you've got to get to know them, and you've got to demonstrate that you care. Um, and that you've got something to offer that is worthwhile them investing their time, which is precious because it's not our full-time jobs, um, in your organisation. Oh, fine. Thanks very much there, Precious. I might, I might hand over to you now, Chris, as well. Like I know, again, you offer a different perspective, and I know you do engage with EWI organisations, so it would be useful to hear from your perspective, like what's, what's worked from you and how you approach it, given, given that what just Precious and Fontaine just said as well. Yeah, look, I, I don't know how much more I can uh, value I can add to this conversation, if I'm honest. I think um, Precious and Fontaine um, have got a lot more uh, knowledge than, than I have in this area, um, and uh, and they're, they're worth listening to. Um, the um, yeah, I, honestly, there's, there's there's not a lot else I could I could add to what Precious just just said. I, I think she summarised it, it, it brilliantly and. Um, it is a learning experience. You've got to go in there. Um, 
uh, is a, with a genuine approach to actually how you we, we will be working with Māori. And I think, uh, you know, people should have that approach with whoever they're working with. Um, but but if you're if it's self-serving in any way, uh, then it quickly comes out, and and I think you can get caught out very quickly in, in that regard too. So um, Māori have navigators that that they also work to. We understand that um, people often ask questions about us, um, uh, make sure to do their the fact checking on who we are as well as as, as, as we're doing our fact checking on them as well. So you've got to make sure that your background. Is, uh, is is in the, is and everything you've done has been in the best interest of Māori and all your clients you've worked with. Awesome. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, I, I might hand over to you now, Fontaine. I, I'm keen to explore, obviously we spoke about it's very important to take time, you know, build a whanaungatanga relationship over time. You know, it's not a sprint, it's a, a journey. Um, but obviously the businesses have um, commercial realities as well. So I was keen to explore the slight ways for effectively balancing you know, cultural outcomes with commercial outcomes? Like, is there, is there any kind of tips or pointers you can give for how, how you can approach that? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a couple of things, I suppose, um, that I'm, I'm learning. And it's one of the is change the language to change our perspective. So we think that... Uh, and I think Chris said it, it's like the power of the collective, not of the one, right? Like, so when they talk to, when people talk to us about, you know, being Māori and the iwi, you know, we come together, we share. And I think, you know, to Precious Point, our need will be the real creator, which is what Pluto said. And when I think about the work we're doing with Ngāti Whātua Rākei, that innovation was actually of the, of the uh, genius of iwi not off the banks. So our role was real simple. It's, you know, our role is to actually um, provide the capital, give access to mortgages for Fano, and provide access to capital for iwi and for Māori entities and land and corporations. They will actually drive the growth, which creates a financial, sustainable financial outcomes. What we have to do is actually go, is it us that are broken in the bank, or is it actually a system play? So when we looked at shared equity per se, the shared equity uh, program enables a collective approach to home ownership. So what we've seen is like um, one of the whānau that we helped, helped their dad, and they said, right, dad, you're first, and there were seven of them. Seven years later, there's like the dad and all of the children, like all the siblings are in homes and now they're looking at a rental property. My point is that look after the collective, the collective will look after the growth of the wealth. Our role in regards to banks is how do we provide access to capital for both iwi as well as for Fano, as well as for Māori, for Māori businesses. So during the um, floods, the businesses that were keeping the regions afloat were ours, were micro businesses, you know, were micro whānau businesses. So how do we create that wealth to enable Fano to actually have that manamo to haki in the places and communities of choice? That's why we use procurement. So for me, it's like how many corporates have really engaged in progressive procurement? How have we thought about, you know, unbundling some of our contracts to enable, you know, um, Māori Fano kind of businesses to be able to go, actually, I'm going to use that contract to build and create a sustainable financial future. That's what we will use as um, the vertical integration into our, into our home. That is what's going to offset the ability to be homeowners for every single person. So what we saw through shared equity is that everyone practically uses the tools of financial kind of, you know, these, how do you know what's going to work? Well, you just use them. That's what we do. We're not scared. Like, so we being Māori are not scared to utilise the tools. What we need is access. So I think when we look at, it doesn't matter what side of the town you look at, you know, um, acknowledging that how do we partner versus stakeholder. Like if to partner with iwi is to bring iwi in at the beginning, 
not at the end. Because that is a relationship shift. That's the change in the perspective, right? So how do we bring iwi in early? And how do we think about how we support Māori whānau businesses? And we and also part of that paradigm is how do we utilise the one and three? Because it's not a let's look after one. It's how do we look after the whole collective because that's where the collective wealth is. But I just add on to that. So I love the way Fontaine is encouraging us to think differently and use different language. So I can see that Missy Takano is online from KPMG. And about 10 years ago, they brought over a, an international change management expert called Fons Trompenpas. And what Fons taught us was to shift our mindset around how we look at a problem. So rather than seeing them as mutually exclusive, um, how through improving cultural outcomes can you create better economic outcomes is what FONS taught us. Um, and so, you know, we, we have the ability to think a bit differently about these things. We've certainly got clients where we can see that their investment in developing their Māori cultural competency has had a remarkable difference on their bottom line. Um, so they don't have to be mutually exclusive. We just have to shift the way that we think about them. Oh, bye. Thanks very much, Precious. Um, well, I've just noticed we've got a, a good question come through, so I might, I might read that one out. I think it's very important. Uh, talks about, is there a difference in terms of this discussing and valuing non-financial benefits when engaging with Māori as opposed to traditional Pākehā-only investment? So it's kind of trying to um, effectively kind of value those non-financial benefits, which is something we, 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 we spend a lot of time and effort on doing as, as well, trying to report on those kind of broader societal outcomes and whānau outcomes. So uh, who would like to tackle that one? Fontaine or Precious, um, are you okay to have a go at that one? I'm go happy to, to start us, Precious. Yeah. So um, it's interesting, right, like because you want the money, but you're you're wanting to just have that, like, so my uncle Api Amahuka used to say he hates coffee drinkers because um, they're only, they only uh, interested in investing in a cup and, and actually only looking at half an hour. And so, you know, what can you actually achieve with one cup of coffee in half an hour? So he preferred, you know, those that actually had dinner, you stay a bit longer, then you have, you know, the, the conversations and then in the conversations, what you understand is the depth of the problem that you're trying to solve and the solutions that you come up together. So whilst you might want to have a transaction, because that's what you're thinking about is the speed to actually growing a, a relationship, there is not like when you, I think um, Nanaya asked a really interesting question. She said, is open banking good for us as Māori? because it focuses on the transaction and not on the depth of the relationship. And the relationship is actually how, how we want to actually grow and, and that's intergenerational. So when we talk about the values, to be fair, you know, the human aspect of building relationships is encompassing all that is precious to you, not just the money, that's part of it, right? Like, so, what we've seen, I suppose, in my experience with uh, Westpac is that it's you spend the time to build the relationship and then the relationship will guide you to understand what the problem is that you are looking to solve. And that is actually iwi-led, not bank-led. So whatever is of immediate concern to iwi, then that's you know what we respond to. When you when you have the relationship, the transactions are easy because you understand what you're trying to achieve. The transaction is harder and it's when you actually don't know what you're trying to do. I know, Prish, what do you think? Really good question. So kia ora, Paulo, for asking the question. Um, I don't have too much insights, but when I think about it, I think of the kupu Modi. So Modi is a, is a life force and all things have Modi. So just to give you a, a Māori lesson online. Um, so if you think of 
the sand at the bottom of the ocean, that sand has Modi. On it might be a rock. That rock has Modi. It has its own life force. Growing on the rock is seaweed, and that seaweed has Modi. Eating that seaweed is a kinna. That kinna has Modi. Eating the kinna is a snapper. That snapper has Modi. Uh, we come along on the, the, the apex predator, pick that snapper out. We have Modi. The water has Modi. The whole ecosystem has Modi. So thinking about investments is only one part of a conversation about wider Modi. Um, how you measure that, there are tools that are available to measure Modi. Um, oh gosh, perimenopause means I can't remember people's names sometimes. Um, but you can go online and look at Modi, M-A-U-R-I, meter, and that'll give you some tools on how to assess those things that aren't determined by numbers, um, but are determined by other indicators. And I'll just to add also Manatu Wahine, so the Ministry of Women's Affairs, they did a, a report that looked at um, the impact of Māori women in the economy. And so they also looked at how does uh, volunteer work, how does, how does labour in the home contribute to the economy. So these are other tools that can give you some indicators on how to look at, into this question. Thank you very much, Precious. I, I, maybe I'll just give my, my own insight on that one as well. So, um, so I work at Farah, which is the Naitahu Investment Scheme, which you know, traditional investment scheme, you're very much focused on, you know, generating a, a strong investment return to help people achieve an outcome, which is obviously what, what we want to do, but we want to do other things as well. Um, so I spoke before about the work we do around enhancing financial literacy, but we very much take a long term or intergenerational focus on the mahi that we do as well. Um, so we spend a lot of time and effort, probably disp disproportionate to other organisations, on working with our youngest members. It can be Pepe, which is you know our babies, or um, our Tamariki as well. Um, so we believe you spend the time and effort educating and giving, equipping them with the tools from that young age. They'll then grow up, and then if they have uh, children themselves, pass on that that uh, th those skills. So to an extent, we are playing a bit of a, a, a long game with with enhancing the financial literacy and um, hopefully improving the financial freedom of our whānau in the future. So, um, yeah, just, just talking about just trying to balance um, economic, oh, sorry, financial and non-financial benefits. Um, okay, so maybe I'm just checking. We've maybe got time for another couple of questions and very keen to get some more questions from the audience as well. Um, so we've already touched this a, f a few times throughout the session, uh, but I was keen to dive down to um, challenges. Um, and then at the end, we'll finish with solutions. So I'll finish on a positive note. But um, I'm keen to just dive into some challenges that that we see facing uh, Murray, whether it's dealing with a, a mainstream organisation. You know, it might be that they're going through the process to try and get lending on a on a fuddy. It might be that they're overwhelmed with the process for signing up to a a KiwiSaver scheme. Um, you know, etc. Et, et I'm uh, just keen to talk about the challenges we see, and that could be around in terms of. The service proposition, like we spoke about before, being transactional as opposed to developing more of a program in a long-term view. It could be access, it could be price. So um, I might hand back to you, Chris, and then maybe Fontaine and Precious, uh, just to, for your kind of insight on, on, on the challenges um, that, that, that you see. Yeah, sure. So if I could just maybe look at it from um, you know some of the different uh, Maori and Iwi groups that we work with and some of the challenges that they might have um, from a portfolio perspective. Um, one of the things, the first things is <clears throat> potentially it's a challenge, but it's also for me also the secret sauce is, is the true accountability that actually comes uh, to uh, a lot of Maori investments that we have because Certainly, um, uh, they are accountable to their iwi. Uh, they are accountable to um, to their faro and and um, they know where you live. They know where you live exactly, um, and and it's and it's a different level of accountability to maybe a charitable trust or um, you know uh, a more opaque trust where there's not a lot of you know how precious mentioned before. All the information is available online for a lot of these groups, whereas if you look at an uncharitable trust, it's really hard to find a lot of information. So accountability uh, is, is, um, is, is a challenge in the sense that, um, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that, um, uh, that you're providing the right information, uh, giving confidence to, uh, to, to, uh, 
to the uh, to the collective within the iwi about what you're doing, why you're doing, and how you can take them along that journey. Um, you know, liquidity is also an issue as well. There's a lot of uh, a lot of the trust that we work with. They might uh, have a lot of land, um, cultural assets. Um, you know, there's a lot of investments around horticulture, fisheries, forestry. That can be really difficult as well. So there was some challenges, um, you know, during the floods that we had last year. Um, and the impact on, on some of the agricultural and forestry lands. Um, the, uh, you know, and the other thing as well is that when it comes to settlements, I think, um, uh, you know, being able to think about how you can work your balance sheet, um, it's a lot easier for the bigger iwi, um, the, bigger, the bigger trusts, um, the smaller ones, though, can can you know can have a lot more of a challenge where, um, where about how they can you know get access to money, think about how they can grow, um, think about how they can make distributions and the like as well. But I'll I'll, I'll park it there. That's that's just my high level thoughts. Sam. Thanks very much, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, Fontaine, are you okay to go next? What are some sure. challenges? <laughs> Precious also knows where I live. Anyway, so. Um, I think that the majority of the, the ones that we're looking at the moment is mighty access to capital. That's that's been the greatest, and everyone's talking about um, lending on Fenua Māori has been the other one, right? They're saying you unbundle that, you you and like that. So, you know, um, and at Tafe we had this discussion, and and we all lend to Fenua like for Fenua Māori, but it's it's around like so for me. Um, you know, traditionally we use the this all the C's, right? Like so, you kind of look at cash flow. So the the Māori land, that's in regards to the security that's been offered. You know what the security is, but actually the first three that you need to, well, we need to think about is cash flow. Is there? Are we helping someone to be able to kind of meet what they're looking at doing? Then the character, the person, and then culture. I think we forget that. Um, culture is quite an important part of whether someone will actually, because at the end of the day, you give someone something, like if you lend them something, you want it back. You don't have to be a bank to be that. You, you could just be like your siblings. It's like, give that back, you know. I know you love you in the room next door. Um, and so, you know, like, so for, for us, culture is part of that. So for us being Westpac, when we looked at all our data, when something is culturally significant, our people pay because you don't want to lose it. It's significant. And so, you know, that's like, so whilst we look at challenges, I think it's the, um, it's actually the, you have to, I suppose for me, it's like we are the, we are the congregation of the willing. And so, you know, everyone talks about the system needs to change or it's difficult. Well, people actually are part of that system. And so, you know, I think about the people online, the financial, like in the financial sector, when we're looking at people like kids in care who can't get access to a bank account, well, that's actually on us. We can do that, right? Like, so we have ordinary jobs, but we can do a little bit extra. And the extra that we do to the ordinary things that we have on day to day create extraordinary outcomes. So as individuals, you know, be the change. Think about what you can do that's extra to enable Fano to get access to capital, to to be able to have, you know, kids and care get access. But even our own kids, you know, it's like the the process isn't simple to get a bank account, and that's the first part of financial inclusion. So how do we look at both ends of the spectrum, being the getting a bank account to actually access for iwi and others? to capital and in the middle of Whenua Māori, well to be fair, like for all the banks we said, hey, we all lend to Whenua Māori but it's how we lend and what we actually put as, where's the relationship to understand what is it that whānau actually want from us to enable them to be able to live in their community of choice, to be able to financially do what they want to do to have that mana motahaki um that's, I suppose that's kind of how I see it. That's kind of how I think about it. Um, happy for other, you know, thoughts around that. Appreciate Thanks very much, Fontaine. Yeah, appreciate if you have any views on challenges as well. 
Um, I'll just give some different perspectives because I agree with both what Chris and Fontaine shared. Um, one of them is the bias that exists within the system. And if I think back to my first year on Whairawa, our commercial board, our chair was offended by the rates that were given to us by banks. And it was based on their assessment of our risk, which actually was low. Um, but that's not how it was um, how it was determined by the bank. So he uh, sharply told them to sharpen their pencil because he could see what he could get on another board elsewhere. So there's a bias that exists within the system, and what that does is it limits our ability to grow. That's all it does. Um, the next one, what have I wrote here? I, I think it's a challenge for the sector, for the financial industry sector, and that's reconciling your role in the demise of Māori. So when we think of banks, when we think of insurance companies, uh, some of their wealth was built off the back of Māori loss. And so being brave enough to reconcile that, um, that role in the trajectory of Māori development is an important thing to consider. And I think the third one, particularly when we're thinking of investment vehicles, is that Māori are not homogenous. We are very territorial. And so ahika is uh, the, the concept of intergenerational occupation of land is important to us. So if you're looking at investment vehicles, you have to figure out how is Ahika prioritised in that vehicle. So I'll add those three. Thanks very much, Precious. All right, we'll put, um, probably just time for the last question now, plus any other question, uh, pathway that we get from, from the audience. Um, so this is very broad. So um, what is the greatest change that you think organised organizations can make so we spend a bit of time obviously today talking about the problem statement but now keen to uh, leave our audience with something that they can go home and actually to initiate change um so I'll, I'll keep the order so maybe go back to you chris just around um what is the change that organizations can make Ooh, um I mean, I think I think of a shout out to uh, the work that Precious does, and, and obviously developing your Maori cultural competency is 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 really important. Um, and I, you know, I think uh, you know, I mentioned before, um, being humble, being genuine, understanding uh, the group that you're engaging with, their history, um, uh, but but um, go deeper than that. You know, there's nothing. Uh, I, th I think we need to be um, uh, having a better understanding of um, some of the cultural norms that, that go on in Māori and how we can make sure as Pākehā we step into their world. Um, uh, and there's so much, so many resources, uh, whether it be, um, you know, uh, language that you can learn, um, classes you can do, um, people you can engage with who are going to give you their help um, and provide their insights as well. I think is a is a really important uh, role. Invest into the relationships. Um, often, I think um, you know you need you need someone who's going to bring you into the room uh, for a lot of these engagements with Maori. So, I think understanding the key uh, people that can help you and in, in invest into those relationships as well. So, those are two things I'd, I'd I'd call out. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, might go to you, uh, Fontaine conscious that you're at the airport as well and you know you could be called for your flight any moment so um i took over chris said and i love what you said Presh. and it's a good it's a those three things are always good challenges that you know like uh and i think about that the opportunity for change lies within us you know and as Māori, probably more so because we're in a, a sector that has a bias and we're part of, you know, changing that bias to enable our people to actually get what they need to get. But I think the opportunity that you provide is the is the ability to take people from their cultural fear to actually that journey into cultural confidence to competency, which enables us to actually engage in our communities and not be scared that we're going to get it wrong, but actually excited to get it right. You know, and so you know, allow humility and curiosity to lead us to a place where we have excitement to be able to see what, how we can help and what we can do. But I think what Precious called out is, is actually what we need to hear. 
is that in the financial sector, I think for me, and, and it's something that Uncle Uppy said, you know, we the positions that we are in of influence are actually to influence change for our people. And so it's not a it's not a, you know, a trip to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually probably a trip back to Gisborne, but um, but you know it's it's that's kind of the real the realism of it is, you know we we can all actually do that extra to create something extraordinary in the ordinary work that we do. Kia ora. Kia ora Fontaine. Precious, any parting words? Um, yeah, I think there's a great opportunity for the financial sector because whatever support you give to Māori benefits the whole country. And so you yourself are going to benefit from that investment. I think um, being remaining in a curious mindset and being open to exploring solutions to circumstances that are unique to Māori um, is, is the best place to position yourself. I also think that supporting Māori procurement is a game changer. So setting targets around Māori procurement is, is it will change the landscape of F SMEs. And if you want to learn more about that, then I encourage you to go to Amotai, A-M-O-T-A-I. Uh, they're experts around procurement and they can, um, they can, you can sign up and they can help you out. Um, and simplifying your own processes to make the opportunities for Māori business to succeed in winning bids um, and to do that it, it means changing your own ways your own methodologies so um, thinking about those things I think are things that this sector in particular can do on top of um, applying your own uh, growth around learning about Māori cultural competency and please come to our website Modia. we're happy to help you nice good plug <laughs> Uh, no, that all sounds awesome. I, I love what you said as well, Fontaine, around um, building cultural um, confidence instead of competence, you know, the whole kind of concept of, of baby steps, because I think if you go from, you know, a level where you don't have much knowledge to all, all of a sudden expecting to be fully competent, that can be quite overwhelming for people and they just simply won't engage. So I, I like your use of the, the difference there between competence and competence. So. Um, Awesome. Well, conscious of time, 4.26. Um, so unless there's any final comments from the panellists, I might hand back to you, Troy, for final comments, and then we'll close with a uh, katakia. I, I loved um, about being excited to get it right, which is a big one for me in particular. Thank you, Fontaine. Um, and, and we're pretty conscious that we don't want today to be tokenism. Uh, this is an ongoing drive with FSC. I, I see on day two of our conference, or the final day, I should say, of our conference, which is promoted to currently, uh, we have a, a breakfast session which continues this theme and this conversation with a strong emphasis on, on business relations in Māori. So if you uh, want to find out more, go to our website. Uh, we'd love to see you, and in particular for the members out there, engage with the the nomination for awards, uh, which get handed out on the night of our glamorous dinner. But uh, again, a, a big thank you, a big uh, mihi aloha to you uh, speakers and guests today and to people who've participated. Sam, back to you. Thanks very much, Troy. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank the panellists again today. I thought it was very insightful. I hope the audience has got something from it as well. So uh, we'll, we'll close with a cover here and have a good evening, everyone. Uh, una here, una here, una here, ki te uru tapanui, ki a wātea, ke māma, te kako, te tinana, te wairua, e te aratakata, koia, rā e roko, whaka area, aka ki ruka, tuta uru, whaka moa, ki a tina, tina, hui ei, taiki ei. Taiki. Uh, Pōmari everyone, ka kite.